Okay, to start off with, we are going to add 50 grams or 2 ounces of butter. And melt that down a little bit here. So what we're making is we are making a pasta sauce that Antonio created himself for a specific pasta shape. That pasta shape no longer exists. It, it, no one makes it that we're aware of. All right. So I think we're going to go ahead and add this bacon here, already chopped. That is 150 grams or 5 ounces of smoked bacon. Um, if your bacon has a rind, you will want to remove that and then we have cut that into strips. Right now what we have um, on the stove top is we have our pasta boiling. We are actually using the large short elbow shape. So the original title of this recipe, forgive my pronunciation, is Marilla Pasta with Peas. In his recipe, obviously he acknowledges that you cannot find this pasta anymore. He does say that you can substitute it with the large elbow shapes, which is what we're using, or you can also use the rigatoni. Okay, so next we are going to add the peas. Um, the recipe does call for small peas. I think um, they mentioned 54. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, we were not able to find it anyway, so we are just using regular frozen peas. And we are using 200 grams or 7 ounces of peas. And then to that, we are going to also add the cassada. Now, you can see that we do not have a full bottle of cassada there. Um, that is a little bit too much for this recipe. Mm. What we are using is 450 grams of cassada. Now, cassada is basically just a tomato puree. Um, We're going to go ahead and add that. We can add that in, yes. Um, you can also just use four large ripe tomatoes that has been skinned and de-seeded. The man behind the DeLorean design from the DeLorean automobile, if you remember that from Back to the Future, um, his name's a little bit hard to pronounce, but it was... <laughs> so you put it there. <laughs> I'll try it, but I don't have it in front of me. Okay, it, I guess it is Giorgetto Giugiaro? Giugiaro. Yeah. If we butchered that name, we're sorry, Giugetto or I'm whatever. I'm confident yeah. that we butchered that Yes. Name. <laughs> but he designed the, along with a lot of other automobile designs, he designed the the body, I believe, of the DeLorean, the yeah. look of the DeLorean. Exactly right. And you talk about a man of diverse talents, he also invented this pasta. Yes, yeah, so he was specifically asked by a large pasta company to create this pasta shape um, that will hold a lot of sauce. And I guess it kind of lost favor with the public because it was not that easy to cook evenly because of the shape. So Antonio said it's very sad that the production of this pasta has been discontinued. However, don't lose all hope because I believe they're bringing the DeLorean back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure they're bringing the pasta back with it. But it's a very interesting connection to think that a car designer designed a pasta designed shape. A pasta yeah. shape. So mm. now that the pasta is done, we're going to go ahead and add the basil leaves to the sauce. Okay. And there's something about the basil and the passata that go so well together. Mm, it's just delicious. Okay, so that is eight basil leaves um, that we have washed. And then once we've got that stirred in, we are going to add the mascarpone cheese to the sauce and stir it in until it's heated through. Okay, and next we're going to add the mascarpone cheese. I don't know if I said that correctly either. Okay, and that is 150 grams or 5 ounces. And for those of you who are not familiar with this cheese, it's basically like a really, really good cream cheese. Yeah, the texture is somewhere between, I would say, butter and a whipped cream maybe. Somewhere yeah, the texture is, I mean, the, the consistency rather. Yeah, much softer than the cream cheese that you might buy. Very soft. Yeah, and a very mild flavor. That cheese is melted in rather nicely, very easy to melt, and it, it's given the sauce a very nice color, I think. Yeah, nice and creamy looking. A, a nice consistency to the sauce. Um, yeah, it, it looks good so far. Yeah, so this is definitely more of a creamy tomato sauce. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add a little salt and pepper before the pasta. <laughs> because that's what the recipe calls for. I would have done it after, but we'll follow his recipe. So now we will go ahead and drain the pasta, add that to our sauce, and then we'll be adding the parmesan cheese to that. Alrighty, we're going to go ahead and start adding our pasta. 
So that was 375 grams of pasta. Okay, we're going to continue to add the pasta. Not a ton ton left. Well, there are some big elbows. Boy, I tell you. We're going to mix that in and then add the Parmesan cheese, which is freshly grated Parmesan. And that was 75 grams or three ounces of Parmesan cheese. Oh, that looks really good. Now we're going to go ahead and add the Parmesan. Okay, we're going to mix that Parmesan in, turn into a nice, good looking meal. Mm, beautiful, creamy, tomatoey, bacony. And then once that is mixed in and heated through, we are going to go ahead and do our taste test. Mm, mamma mia! And it looks fantastic. Mm, Very nice color. Get a little bacon in there with me. Hmm. Oh wow. That is really good. Mmm. Mmm. We may just eat the whole plate before this is over. <laughs> um, wow, that's a fantastic combination. The pasta works with it just yeah. fine. Even the peas go great. The peas go great. All the flavors come through mm. great of the you know creamy tomato sauce, the peas, the basil. Mm. But this is something I intend to eat. All the time it's yeah. good yeah so guys um, leave a comment below if you decide to try this we always love to hear you know what you think of Antonio's recipes and it's really easy to make so until next time I'm gonna keep eating enjoy mm -hmm.